Were you exposed to toxic substances during your military service? If so, you could be eligible for VA disability benefits. What's up, fellow vets? Clay Houston here, former Black Hawk pilot in the U.S. Army Reserve, now a content creator for VA Claims Insider. I've written 50 plus blogs on topics ranging from how to get TDIU to a long list of other disabilities. And today I want to talk to you about EPA Superfund sites. Superfund sites are locations that the EPA has identified as being contaminated by a toxic substance and that they are now in the process of cleaning up. Superfund is just another name for the Comprehensive Environmental Response, Compensation, and Liability Act, which was passed into law in the 1980s. Now, this law created a tax on chemical and oil companies, and that money is used to help fund the EPA in their cleanup efforts. And it also gave the EPA the authority to clean up contaminated sites and to force those responsible for the contamination to either clean it up themselves or to uh, reimburse the EPA for the cleanup efforts. And guess what? There are over 100 military bases, depots, munition plants, airfields, and naval yards that are on the EPA's list of Superfund sites. I'm not going to put you to sleep by reading that full list here. Just follow the link in the description of this video to our blog and you can see all the sites. Now, if you are on one of those military bases and exposed to a toxic substance, and develop a disability because of it, then you could be eligible for VA disability benefits. And I know there's a lot of people out there who are hesitant to pursue a VA rating. You know, oftentimes that they're just concerned that they're gonna put in all this effort just to get denied. And maybe they also think that their condition isn't severe enough to get them very much compensation. So is it even worth it if they if they do win? But what you're not considering is all the other benefits that come with a VA rating. For example, a VA rating can get you access to VA healthcare that comes with free inpatient and outpatient care. They'll also reimburse you for travel to and from VA healthcare facilities for treatment of your disability. You get access to employment readiness programs, a burial and plot allowance, a 10-point hiring preference for federal jobs. You can also get access to a VA-backed home loan, and you also get access to commissaries, exchanges, morale and welfare, recreation centers, you know, MWR, in person and online. So there is a long list of benefits besides monthly compensation. Now let's talk about some of the toxins that you could have been exposed to while on a military base or, you know, like a military facility. This is just a short list. I'm only going to name a few and the ones that I do name are those that are associated with the VA presumptive condition. Now, a VA presumptive condition is a rateable disability that the VA automatically assumes was caused by your military service. For presumptive conditions, you don't have to prove service connection. This means you don't have to prove via evidence that something that happened during and because of your military service is responsible for your disability. This is often the most difficult part of the VA claims process for many veterans. But if you have a presumptive condition that's already taken care of, you don't gotta worry about it. Now Congress and the VEA established presumptive conditions whenever enough service members with similar service records develop the same conditions. This is kind of where the term Gulf War Syndrome comes from. Gulf War Syndrome is not an actual condition, it's a list of conditions, and it's associated with service in the Gulf War area. First up, contact with mustard gas or lewisite. Now, if you came into contact with mustard gas, you may have experienced some irritation of the eyes, a swelling of the eyes, diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, and several other awful symptoms, and you could have developed chronic conjunctivitis. That is a presumptive condition, as well as the following. Keratitis, corneal opacities, scar formations, acute non-lymphomic leukemia, laryngeal cancer, lung cancer, chronic laryngitis, chronic bronchitis, asthma, or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Next up is the contaminated drinking water at Camp Lejeune. Now, if you were at Camp Lejeune or MCAS New River between 1953 and 1987, you could be at risk of these illnesses, and these are presumptive conditions. Adult leukemia, aplastic anemia, bladder cancer, kidney cancer, liver cancer, multiple melanoma, or Parkinson's disease. Lastly, radiation exposure. If you were part of nuclear weapons testing or a nuclear cleanup, or were assigned to a gaseous diffusion plant, you could have developed some of these presumptive conditions. Several cancers, including bile duct, bone, brain, breast, colon, esophagus, gall, bladder, could have developed leukemia, or lymphomas, except Hodgkin's disease. Another common toxin, and this one's really common, is asbestos. A lot of members of the military are exposed to asbestos, even today. Unfortunately, there are no presumptive conditions for asbestos, but if you're able to show through evidence that you were exposed to asbestos and it caused a disability and it's tied to your military service, then you could be eligible 
for a VA rating. Now, signs of asbestos poisoning include shortness of breath, dry cough, chest tightness or chest pain, weight loss, a dry crackling sound in the lungs, and you could develop mesothelioma, lung cancer, or colon cancer due to asbestos exposure. All right, that's all I got for you in this video. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel so you get notified of new videos in the future. And follow the link in the description to our blog. Give us your email and we'll send you uh, an update whenever we post a new blog. Thanks, guys.